What is up folks, how's it going? This is Watch from MW Technology, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Apple Vision Pro. It's been out for almost six months now, so much of the initial hype has died down. We've had a chance to play around with it for a while, and I've been pretty darn impressed with what I've seen. But the thing that I want to know is, is it really worth seven times the price of this thing, its main competitor, the Meta Quest 3? So we're gonna go through the pros and cons of each headset to determine which one has the best overall features, which one is actually more useful, and which one is ultimately the best headset. So let's get right into it. Now the first thing I wanna talk about with the Apple Vision Pro when it comes to the advantages definitely has to be the internal display. Each eye gets a native resolution of 3680 by 3140. That's about 2.5 times more pixels than the Quest 3. On top of that, you're also looking at a micro OLED display. So that means better overall black levels, brightness, and colors. Now there are some downsides to the AVP display. Firstly, compared to the Quest 3, you're limited to only 100 hertz refresh rate versus 120 and the field of view is narrower around 95 degrees versus 110 degrees on the quest now regardless of that i do have to say that the fidelity of the apple vision pro is truly next level the first time i put on the headset my jaw dropped to the floor it is really a mind-blowing experience especially consuming native content and apps that apple has created for this thing and it's unlike anything i've ever experienced now i am aware that there are going to be upcoming headsets like the pimax crystal super that will actually have a higher native resolution as well as an oled display at half the price but typically these special VR headsets are tethered to a PC. They're even bulkier and heavier than the Vision Pro, making it quite a unique product for the time being. Now, the resolution on the Quest 3 is about 2K to each eye, which is a huge improvement considering back eight years ago, we tested out the first Oculus Rift, which only had roughly about 1K to each eye. So you have minimal screen door effect and 4K and HD content looks fairly sharp and very consumable. Obviously, you don't have the same level of presence or immersion when it comes to clarity compared to the Apple Vision Pro, but definitely not bad for the price. Now, another advantage on the Apple Vision Pro is what we have inside. It's powered by the same M2 chip found on the uh, desktops and laptops, and it is super fast, very snappy, and very capable in a lot of regards. So you can do a ton of multitasking capabilities, play uh, high resolution videos, and it'll load fast, it'll play fast without any hiccups. Now, the Quest 3 is powered by the Snapdragon X XR2 Gen 2 chip from Qualcomm. It's fairly good and versatile for most things that you're going to do on the headset. But if you're loading up a lot of videos or uh, loading up a lot of games, it does take a little while to load those things up. And the general snappiness, responsiveness of the OS and interface is not as quick compared to the Apple Vision Pro. And therefore, it's a little bit more limited from a multitasking and power use case scenario. Furthermore, both these headsets are designed for reality augmentation. So you use the built-in cameras to see through the headsets and get a sense of presence of where you are. Now, in regards of that experience, I think the Apple Vision Pro is slightly better, but both are still fairly grainy and noisy in terms of their uh, image performance from those internal cameras. But if reality was a 10 out of 10, I would say that the Apple Vision Pro was a 3 out of 10 and the Quest 3 was a 2 out of 10. One of the things that makes the Apple Vision Pro a little bit better is it doesn't suffer from the same same warping or rolling shutter like effects that you have with the Quest 3. So if I wave my hand in front of the camera, you're going to see that my hand is kind of warped and distorted across and any kind of fast motion is also kind of twisted and warped in reality. Vision Pro does not demonstrate those artifacts, but there are some general artifacts that you're still going to find on the Vision Pro and the camera quality is still not great, but slightly better than the Quest. Furthermore, another unique perspective of the Vision Pro is the eye tracking. With the native Vision OS, it's specifically designed to track your eye and using pinch movements from your hand, you can uh, click on specific things that you're looking at. It works fairly intuitively, especially when you're using built-in native apps within the Vision OS platform. And once you get used to it, I can see the benefits from a uh, speed and dynamic control perspective where it can be faster than a touchscreen or even a point and click system. However, one big issue with eye manipulation only is that the eye doesn't really like to fixate on a single point in space for a prolonged period of time. It actually moves quite rapidly. We can turn on the point 
click animation on the Vision OS and you can see that my eye is not really fixating at a single point like a mouse would or even a touch screen. It actually jots back and forth quite a bit. It's not a big issue when you have large icons like on the Vision OS and native apps built for this system. But once you go onto a desktop web page like on YouTube, since there's no native app, and if I want to make the YouTube video full screen, it's very difficult to do so since there's so many other commands around that small point and the eye isn't precise enough to do so. So typically I have to go really close to that icon and then fixate on it and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's pretty frustrating. It also makes accounting or spreadsheet work fairly difficult and if you manipulate a lot of data on a large display, it's pretty much impossible to do so with eye tracking alone. Now there are alternative methods to controlling the Vision Pro besides just eye movement. One is head movement where you turn your entire head uh, via the neck and a uh, face towards where you want to go and you, if you turn on the pointer you could see that illustration quite well. Another way is using your wrist which is basically your entire hand as a air mouse and then you can also just manipulate your index finger and then point in a specific direction just using your finger to manipulate your pointer or cursor as well. Now most of these modes of controls are kind of inferior to a traditional touchscreen, mouse, trackpad, and even a lot worse than the dedicated motion controls that found on traditional headsets like on the Quest 3, which are a lot more precise for uh, controlling things in space and time, and a lot better for VR gaming as well. Now lastly, my favorite feature by far on the Vision Pro and why anybody would justify the $3,500 price tag would be its multi-window viewing experience. It's probably the best VR slash AR headset for multi-window capabilities. Uh, so for example, on the Quest 3, you can have up to three screens, but they have to be fixed on a specific grid side by side each other. You can have them in kind of a curved shape, which is actually missing from the Apple Vision Pro, but you're kind of limited in terms of how many screens you can have and what position they're going to be in in your virtual slash real environment. With the Apple Vision Pro, you can pretty much make the screen in any size, any orientation, and just have it in your virtual space as a permanent fixture. Now there are some downsides. You can't save these virtual spaces uh, that I'm aware of at this point, but it is really cool uh, to have all these floating windows wherever you go. I'm talking in an office, in a traditional sense, in the library, out in a park, anywhere you go, you have the sickest mobile office setup you can ever have. On top of that, you can connect to a MacBook and get an external monitor up to 4K resolution, and you can use its uh, built-in keyboard and trackpad, and the screen will actually become blank, which is great for privacy. In addition to that, you can also hook up any kind of uh, Bluetooth uh, keyboard, uh, but in terms of Bluetooth mice, right now it's very limited, where only, I believe, the Apple trackpad will work as a third-party pointer attachment. It won't really work with any regular Bluetooth mouse directly connected to the Vision Pro for the time being. The Quest 3 on the other hand has no problem to connecting to most Bluetooth keyboard and mice since it's running the Android OS. Now let's talk about the biggest issue I have with the Vision Pro and that definitely has to be the weight and cumbersome nature of the headset. Apple's done an amazing job of cramming all this technology, a full M2 chip with a dual 4K displays in such a tiny form factor, but then surrounded it with fairly heavy materials such as glass, aluminum, fabrics, etc. And at the end of the day, lighter is always better regardless of build materials and the Quest 3 weighs about 515 grams versus 650 grams for the Apple Vision Pro not including the battery which is another 353 grams. So not only is the Quest lighter but also has the battery built inside which gives you the same runtime of roughly around two hours of real world usage. Furthermore, just the facial interface on the Vision Pro weighs 90 grams and this is just to reduce the amount of light spill and to make the face as comfortable as possible with the headset. Another problem is the fact that each Vision Pro is unique to its specific user. You do a facial scan to actually buy the thing and then you have to have the right optics if you have corrective lenses 
your contacts. So therefore, you can't really share your Vision Pro with another person compared to the Quest 3, which is a little bit more accommodating and universal in terms of its fitting options straight out of the box. The facial interface has the ability to telescope in and out. So you can actually accommodate glasses if you have to use glasses with your VR headset. Although that isn't ideal, you probably want to use contact lenses or optical inserts. But if you have no other choice, you still have that option versus that's completely infeasible with the Vision Pro. Moreover, another big issue with the Vision Pro is that it gets really hot after a couple of hours of usage. I actually used it for four hours straight plugged in and uh, after uh, about an hour and a half, both the battery and the front part of the headset got super uncomfortable to use and eventually pretty much unbearable. So that makes it very difficult to replace a traditional desktop or laptop, especially if you're going to do like a proper eight hour shift with it and uh, therefore negating any kind of use case scenario as your only PC. And that brings us to the final issue with the Apple Vision Pro is what the heck do you do with this thing besides consume some cool looking 3D movies or using it as a virtual display. And uh, that really brings us to the limitations of the existing Vision OS app library. Obviously, it's a very new product and uh, Apple itself hasn't really done too much in terms of native app support. And obviously, things like Google and Facebook and other big players in the game haven't developed dedicated apps as well. So uh, content is very lacking if you want to do something, you're pretty much limited to the uh, browser built inside over here. And you can watch YouTube, Netflix, and things like that through that. Uh, but it is uh, still super limited. And if you're just using the eye tracking, very frustrating to control desktop experience for a vision-based operating system. Now, compared to what we have with the MetaQuest 3, which inherited the Oculus library, as well as a PC VR gaming, which is has been in development for almost more than a decade now, it's definitely uh, no comparison compared to what you can do uh, with uh, the Quest compared to the Apple Vision Pro. Now, when it comes to gaming itself, there are some really cool experiences on the Apple Vision Pro. Some of my favorite definitely have to be the board games where you could uh, lay down a virtual chess set or battleship in your space and it looks so realistic. It was incredibly fun uh, to use these uh, specific games and uh, the pinch uh, animations and overall control schemes really work quite well. I can't say the same thing for the Lego game, which was pretty tough to manipulate with the hand controls since there is a little bit more involved in uh, creating virtual Lego uh, compared to just moving chess pieces around and things like that. And uh, some of the other games were okay, uh, but uh, copies of like popular VR titles such as Beat Saber and things like that, but uh, you're using hand controls instead of uh, motion controls, which is always going to be inferior uh, based on my experience with VR gaming. You can actually connect an Xbox or PlayStation controller to the Vision Pro and play some controller-based games, and it works fairly well, but gaming is never really Apple's strong suit, and the Vision Pro shows that pretty prominently. Now, on the Quest 3, the library of apps is a lot more expansive, diverse, and a lot more useful, in my opinion, since it's been in development for so many more years, and uh, since it's running the Android operating system, it's fairly versatile to adapt and develop apps onto, so that's why you have no shortage of specific apps for the Quest. On top of that, it's also uh, linking up to the Steam VR library. So if you have a gaming PC and a Quest, you're pretty much covered for all your gaming needs. Now to briefly mention some of the biggest downsides of the Quest 3, firstly it has to be the battery life. Much like the Apple Vision Pro, it's very limited, especially if you're going to be consuming 1080p 4K content or playing games. I managed to struggle to get an hour and a half real world usage. You can do some things to improve the battery life, but it's going to be a losing battle and you probably want to hook up to an external source for long term usage. The cameras at the front are not as good as what we find on the Apple Vision Pro. Uh, a little bit more noisy and grainy. Uh, and also you have the warping issue that we talked about earlier and the low light performance is a lot worse as well. On top of that, uh, you do have a fairly loud fan that kicks on every once in a while once the unit gets hot, which is going to be quite a bit if you're doing anything visually intensive, which is VR in a nutshell. 
I just say if you're going to be using this as a standalone device, know that the Snapdragon processor inside isn't as fast as what we find with the M2 and does feel a little bit sluggish playing 4K content or VR gaming is going to be significantly downsampled. If you do uh, hook it up to a uh, gaming PC with fairly decent specs and a fast home network, your experience is definitely going to improve, but as a standalone device, it is fairly underpowered. Beyond that, the facial interface that we talked about earlier uh, is great for accommodating different facial sizes and even glasses, but there is quite a bit of light spill and there are a number of third-party facial interfaces that a lot of people exchange out to make it a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more sealed from a light spill perspective. Now, in conclusion, both of these headsets pretty much do the fundamental same thing. You can do work on them, you can consume content, play games, etc. What the Apple Vision Pro certainly excels at is the overall experience. Mainly the internal displays are nothing like anything else in the market in the VR AR space. And that's why uh, the technology is so cutting edge. And uh, based on some of the trade-offs that we listed in this video, some people could still justify the price because there's again, not really any experience on the market quite like the Vision Pro. But when it comes to the overall value and what is the better overall headset, I probably agree with Mark Zuck when he says that the MetaQuest 3 is the better overall headset. Not only is it more versatile, but you have a greater and more diverse app library. It's more versatile in terms of connectivity options. And from a visual perspective, I think the MetaQuest 3 really looks great on its own, especially when you don't have anything to compare it to. It's a fantastic experience. And considering the price point of the AVP, you can get an epic gaming PC, a MacBook, a flagship smartphone, and still have money left over for two or three more headsets with the Quest 3. And uh, certainly from a price perspective, there's no real argument there. So in most regards, I'm going to highly recommend the Quest 3, especially if you're getting into a VR for gaming, productivity, or some of its AR use applications as well. I'd definitely love to know if you guys have tried out the Apple Vision Pro at the Mac store or anything like that. What is your experience? Do you think it's worth the price point? And would you consider getting it over the Quest 3 or any other headset out there? If you have any specific questions, I'd definitely love to know what you guys think. Give us a thumbs up if you haven't done so already, and please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. As you can see, much of this content is pretty expensive uh, to produce. We don't have any sponsors, and we don't have a lot of third-party support uh, to make this content. It all comes down to viewers like yourself. So big thank you for continuing to support the channel, watching our content, and we'll see you real soon in the next one. Take care.